Tractate of Abatra, page 162. We will start with 161, two lines from the bottom of the page. The subject of preparing a document, we call document get, any type of Talmudic document. There is a specific halakha, in a way new one, that has to be some type of summary of the entire um, term and conditions within the document put down at the very bottom of the document. Here is the word. We explained yesterday one of our key concerns is forgery, fake document, all kind of ideas that people can use and abuse the system. So one of the concerns we explained yesterday is taking advantage of the fact that there is a space left and people can fill up the space with all kind of things. So here the rabbis rules, they said when you write a document, at the beginning you write all the details involved with the document, but the last line has to say that we made ma'asekinyan, that we made um, the final stage of uh, acquisition between party and whatever it's written above and then the witnesses sign on that. That's the way the Rashbam explains. Now obviously the, the, the key idea of writing this, this language, this document, the Shach, Siftei Kohen brings the Hagarot Maimonidot, that he said that, uh, that uh, if it's something new, or you're concerned about someone that writes something new, then we ignore it, because that's basically the bottom line. But here is the very interesting law um, uh, language of the uh, Rambam, the Rambam said, and you see it in others, you see it also in Choshen Mishpat, uh, in the Code 44, it is required to review some of the details of a document in its final line. The reason for this is that no new information may be learned from the final line, which is the very end of the document, due to the pa to possibility of its having added later, meaning after the witnesses have signed. Now, if one did not review the, conte the, the content of the document in the final line, the document is not invalidated, but the content of the final line is disregarded. And as we said in the code, there is a big discussion, we just give the, the, the key idea in Hoshim Mishpat 44 and also 42, the, the, the Rema writes that all this idea of, of Kula, of leniency, is not according to those who uh, maintain that any a, um, type of a, a, a divergence from the halachot of documents instituted by the sages invalidates the document and he basically, the Ramah brings the Nimukei Yosef that the last line is disregarded only if the content um, is to the benefit of the holder of the document if it is for his uh, determined there is no concern that it may have been added later and its uh, content is taken into account. Now today it has become customary to write everything everything is confirmed and established at the end of all documents any text written prior to that formula is taken um, into account even if it's uh, the last line and it's no longer ne necessary to review the very last line. Now the Gemara said, my ta'ama, what's the reason for this second requirement? 162, Amar Amram, lefi she'ein lemedim mishita achrona. He said, the reason for that, and this is the beautiful language of the Rashbam, 
מפני שאין העדים יכולים לקרב חתימתם כל כך בסו, בסמוך בסוף השטר, ומניחים רווח בין השטר לחתימתם, ויכול אדם לזה. So the key is, as we explain, is the fear of so, uh, forgery. So because one may not learn any uh, new details from the final line of the document, so since it's a potential for forgery, so um, because, again, the space of... Um, Sharir Vekayam, the whole idea of confirm is not there. So if a person writes a new Tnai Hadash, a new idea, a new stipulation, um, it's a concern because p- unfortunately people take advantage in faking things. So Amar Rav Nachman Rav Amran Menalach, how do you know that you learn that from the very last line? Amar Le Rav Amram said to Rav Nachman, the Tanya, we learn in the Brayta, Erchiket at Ha'edim Shnei Shitin. So he basically distanced the witness's signature in uh, two lines from the uh, text of the document. So in other words, he is now leaving two lines blank. So he said, if that's the case, we have no choice but to say that Shnei um, Shitin uh, Pasul, the document is invalid. However, Shita Achat Kasher, if it's just one line, it's still valid. Why we said if it's two lines, so it's, a, it's already no good. So he explained, Dilma Mezayef Vekatav. Unfortunately, the, see how smart the rabbis are. He says that the person can forge unverified in, information and writes that false information in those lines. So they said, Shita Achat Nami Shema Mezayef Vekatav. So if you leave one line, the person can do that too. So therefore you have to have this conclusion from this writer that one may not learn any new details from the final line of the document. So only when you have two lines left blank, you have a serious concern or false information. Otherwise, otherwise not. That's the way they understand it. Now, is a, um, I would like to share with you a very important um, understanding from Sefer Karim. Sefer Karim was written by Rabbi Yosef Elbo, who was one of the early Middle Ages giant rabbi uh, um, in Spain. And he wrote in a Sefer Karim Ma'amar Revi'i, beautiful point based on this Gemara. He said, Shehizkir Moshe Rabbeinu beparashat ha'azin. At the very end of the Torah, our uh, teacher, our prophet of the prophet, Moshe Rabbeinu, he said, Kshiratza lachatom ha-Torah, when he wanted to, to uh, final stage of sealing the Torah, Amar simu levavchem lechol advarim asher anuchim ahit bachem atom. Pay attention to all these words that I um, um, uh, testified before you today. Ki lo davar reku mikhem, ki uchaychem, wo advar ze tarikho la adama. So he basically implies here, Rabbi Yosef Elbo said, in, in two different types. One is sachar gashmi, one is sachar ruhani. So when it's come to the reward for the Torah, you have the physical and you have the spiritual. Physical, because of this Torah, you have a long life on earth. The spiritual, the blueprint of life, the Torah, that's your life. So here he wants to differentiate, and he said, So it means that the spiritual part is not just an empty spot, it's just very serious. You shouldn't think that anything else more important. That's the core of your success. So it means that in a way the whole materialistic world and success is based on the, um, the spiritual world. And the derivative he brings, um, uh, Rabbi Elbo in the book Sefer Karim, because we said, Shmamina en lemedim ishita chona, which means we derive all of that, as we said here, from the very uh, a conclusion of the last line, which is in a way um, metaphorically expression of the very end of the uh, Torah. 162b, Ibai Alehu. Here, the rabbis raised a quandary, a dilemma. 
Shita umechza mai. Since we talk about two lines and one lines, how about line and a half? Which is between the ktav, between the written text, and chatimat ha'edim, and the signature of those witnesses. So since you do not have a space for two lines, or you said the, the, the original person that made this document, he may be distance um, two lines, so therefore the document is invalid, that's the way that Tosfot said. Tashma, irchik et ha'edin shnei shitim pasul. So if the distance of the signature of witnesses were two, two lines, it's invalid. You derive from that that one and a half is okay. A masefa, but let's look at the last clause of the Brayta. What did they say? If he distanced the witnesses, shita achat, one line, kasher. Shita achat ude kasher. Ha shita o mechza pasul, the other way around. If it's one and a half, it's not. Ela meha leka la meha mishma mina. You cannot derive from this Bible. So the Rashbam explained that because it's one contradicts the other, so therefore we cannot have a definite um, view on one and a half. Maya ve'ala, what's the conclusion with this type of question? Tashma, the Tanya, echik et ha'edim shnei shitim in ha'kftav pasul. If, as we said, distance, the signature of the two witnesses, two lines, it's not valid. Pachot mikan kasher, if less, it's okay. So it means, as long as it's less than two, it's okay. Hayu arba or v'chamisha edim ha'chatumi al-ashtar, when it's ha'echad mehem karov ha'pasul, if it was four or five witnesses signed on a document, and they search and it turns that one of them was relative, can be for or against. So, or if people who are basically um, in violations, that they are not valid to, um, to be a witnesses, as the Mishnah in Sanhedrin 24 tells us. So, therefore, or as Rabbi Nuchanel says, that it, we found out later that it was relative or someone with um, invalidity to be a witness. Titkayem edud bashar. The rest of the witnesses basically confirm the the testimony. Mesayel lechizkiya dam achizkiya milahu bekrovim kasher. If the the it was a space of two lines and a field, the scribe field with a signature of relatives, its um, befitting is valid. So he's not spell out what exactly you mean by that, but we understand the way that the Mefarshim said that it was a space between the text and the witnesses. The others said that it was a get kereach. Uh, that's the base on Mishnah Gitin 81b. But anyway, ve'altit man, you not ask, sharei avir suka posel bishlosha, schach pasul posel be'arva. They try to compare from the lowest suka. So we said that empty space um, in the roofing of the suka is disqualified the suka if the space extends for three hundred. So the uh, and the materials um, that unfit to be used for roofing disqualify the sukkah only if the unfit material extends for four hand breadth. So what you see here, if he filled up that airspace, um, um, the, the, um, so the the sukkah is okay. So it means filling up airspace in the schach that is basically that schach is is pasul that basically validate the sukkah. So the same way you try to juxtapose to, to, uh, to our this, uh, idea, if there is a significant gap between the text and the signatures, the document is not valid, but if the gap is filled with the signatures of those disqualified from bearing witness, is valid. So the, the Benu Gershom and Tosfot have a lot to say how and the Rajba, Hidush Aran, many others have a lot to discuss how about and how this really take place. Um, I think the, the best source is the code Shulchan Aruch Hoshen Mishpat in 45. Uh, in very short, the code said if witnesses on a document uh, distances their signatures from the text, leaving more than a two blanks lines, and the gap was then filled with signatures of relatives or people or people otherwise unfit to bear witnesses, the document is valid, as is no longer um, um, forgeable. Uh, these additional signatures may not be added after the document is presented for collection 
of signature uh, uh, um, in, in, in rabbinic court, while the Ravid and Rosh hold that the filling of those signatures may be done even without the knowledge um, of the obligated party. But uh, Rabbi Yonah disagree. Ba'elehu shnei shitim shamru. Now we, the, the question is, is um, if you have two blank lines between the text and the signatures. So that's what the sages um, uh, said invalidates the document. 163, hen So the, the, here we talk about the space between lines that added. So less than that, the document is not an issue, it's still valid. Or Dilma hen velo aviram. Or you said that apply the text written itself uh, with, uh, without the spaces. So the Gemara said, Amar Avnachman Baritzak Bistabra de hen aviram. We know that this and the space, uh, which means that the two lines with the airspace in between them, the Sagrata hen velo aviram, lemai chazia. Otherwise, without a space, what's the, the purpose um, um, for, their, uh, for their space? You have to say that these are two lines with their space. That's meaning that that's the final. Because the Rashbam said, if otherwise the, the writing, the Ktav, will be too small, the, 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 the rest of the document, which means the, the way he can write in a regular manner of writing, the airspace between the line will not be sufficient, so therefore the forgery will be clear. I'd like to conclude with Khatam um, Sofer. The Khatam Sofer in Orachaim Memvav 46, he brings Minchat Yaakov. Since we talk about a um, shitao mechza, so he brings Minchat Yaakov that said when we talk about Lecha Mishneh, it can be one and a half and not full. And he brings a proof from Gmarayim Brachot, page 3b, that Rab Ashi said, Meshamra upalga, name Meshamra karinale, which means Lecha Mishneh by force of circumstance can be one and a half. Uh, but Khatam Sofer come and try to differentiate from the Psukim that if it's written in a plural, Lashon Rabim, which means that's plural, it inc but, uh, but um, otherwise, Mi'ut Rabim Shnaim, uh, which means that it's included one and a half. Uh, but if it's written Shnaim or Mishneh, so therefore the Khatam Sofer that said that it, one and a half it's not sufficient, but the Gilonea Shais, Rav Engel, in Brachot, he brings a very interesting proof to differentiate between that. He said here, in our Gemara, they said, Shitao mechza mai, tashma rechik ta'edim shne shitim pasul, ha-shitao mechza kasher. So it means that uh, when you have uh, the situation that someone writes to, so one and a half, it's not bichlal, it's not included. So therefore, he bring proof, Rav Engel in Gilunei Ashas, that there's no such a thing one and a half bread. But as we said, that it's a different view between the Khatam Sofer and Hagri Engel. Mm -hmm.